Okay, good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining us on our weekly AJA Zoom event, and welcome to any new people uh, who are joining us for the first time this week. We also have people watching on Facebook and some who listen to the audio replay, which is broadcast every Thursday at midday and Sundays at 4 p.m. on J Air Community Radio. That's at FM 88 in Melbourne or at j air.com.au everywhere else. Welcome to you all. My name is Alan Friedman. I'm Vice President of the Australian Jewish Association. Uh, also on your screen is David Adler, President of the AJA. And our guest tonight, retired Ambassador Yoram Ettinger. And the topic is the myth of the demographic threat to Israel. Uh, tonight's format will be a presentation by Yoram, and then we'll, uh, we'll take some questions afterwards. Uh, as usual, I mentioned to people that if you want to ask a question, what we ask you to do is to raise your hand electronically. Uh, the way to do that is in the reactions icon at the bottom of the screen. That lets us know that you want to ask a question. If you want to put a written question on the chat function, you can do that. And Robert Gregory, our Director of Public Affairs, will read some of them out during question time. Former Secretary of State John Kerry told Israel back in 2016 that it can either be Jewish or democratic, but it cannot be both. The implication was that, was that if Israel didn't recognise a Palestinian state in Judea and Samaria, then an Arab population explosion there would mean Israel would be forced to abandon the principles of democracy in that region in order to maintain its Jewish character. So was he correct or not? One person who doesn't think so is retired Ambassador Yoram Ettinger, an expert on US-Israel relations and the Middle East, who has led us, who has co-led a study of the Jewish Arab demographic balance, which has been conducted since 2004. He joins us now. Yoram, welcome to the AJA and thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, you've got a presentation, so uh, we'll let you set that up. And when you're ready, tell us what we need to know. Okay. Uh, maybe before I uh, set it up, uh, just a comment. Uh, the demographic uh, controversy or demographic uh, issue, uh, the myth of the Arab demographic time bomb is one of multitude of examples of the huge gap between conventional wisdom and reality. Uh, usually conventional wisdom uh, is pretty convenient and uh, reality, especially in the Middle East, is always uh, highly complex, very frustrating, and it doesn't come uh, easy, certainly, uh, when it comes to looking for a solution. And what I will uh, try to do in the next uh, few minutes, uh, half an hour, I believe, before we turn to uh, Q&A and your own opinion, what I will try to do is share with you not my opinion, certainly not my projections, but highly or well-documented facts on the ground, and as you will see, mostly coming out of uh, Palestinian uh, sources, as well as uh, Israeli sources, World Bank, uh, etc. And um, I will start with uh, sharing uh, with you uh, the uh, my PowerPoint. Uh, is it? Uh, uh, can you yes, see now? Yes, we can. See that okay, yeah. very good. Uh, th this is the bottom line of the study which has been conducted since 2004 by a group of three um, uh, Americans, six uh, Israelis. And the bottom line is that not only isn't there a demographic, uh, an Arab demographic time bomb, in fact. There is an unprecedented, unprecedented Jewish demographic tailwind. And as you'll see later on, contrary to conventional wisdom, not primarily because of the Haredi or ultra Orthodox sector in Israel, but primarily due to the secular sector in Israel, and especially the Yappies in 
the Tel Aviv uh, area. And at the same time, Arab uh, demography has been westernized in a dramatic uh, manner. And that uh, this trend has been going on uh, since roughly 1995. Uh, when it comes to uh, bottom line, uh, there is uh, another bottom line now with facts on the ground. And again, I will show you uh, in a few minutes, how do we get to such uh, figures? Uh, we're talking about one and a half million gap in Judea and Samaria alone. Namely, the Palestinian Authority claims 3 million Arabs. In fact, there are one and a half million uh, Arabs. And here there are five categories uh, where we show this one and a half million uh, gap. In fact, it the gap grows by the year, as we'll see in a minute. I do not include here the number of uh, death, which also presents a gap between the reported number and the actual number. The reason I don't show it here because uh, death as it is in all other societies in the world constitutes a very, very small element of the overall uh, demography, but just to allow you to get a taste of the uh, inflated numbers uh, by Palestinians. In this case, with death, it's deflated number. Some years ago, the Israeli Central Bureau of Statistics conducted a study of uh, Palestinian Authority, <coughs> excuse me, uh, numbers, and their conclusion was, if we take the uh, death numbers seriously, credibly, then the conclusion has to be that life expectancy among Arabs in Judea, Samaria, and Gaza is among the uh, highest in the world, if not the highest in the, uh, in the world. An example, in their uh, uh, sense, periodical census, every 10 years since 1997, they also include Arabs who were born in 1845. That's why one uh, of a heck uh, life expectancy uh, 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 number. Uh, when it comes to the gap between reality and conventional wisdom, it hasn't started uh, recently. Ben-Gurion faced uh, uh, such conventional wisdom among the demographers, statisticians in pre-1948 Israel. And in fact, the founder of Israel's Central Bureau of Statistics, uh, the founder of uh, statistics and uh, demographic department at the Hebrew uh, University, the late professor Roberto Bucky issued a four page uh, uh, projection uh, back in 1944, attempting attempting to convince Ben Gurion to delay his the determination to declare uh, independence, and according to this uh, uh, to that uh, projection, uh, there was no demographic ground for declaring independence or establishing a Jewish state because, according to that. Uh, projection, uh, which was uh, issued in, uh, in 1944, in fact, in October 1944, by 2001, there will, not, there will be, under the best case scenario, 2.3 million Jews in the land of Israel. Well, slight mistake of some uh, 5 million. Today we have 7.5 million uh, Jews in the land of Israel. Ben-Gurion uh, was absolutely correct in his demographic uh, outlook. He had no uh, undergraduate or graduate degrees in statistics or demography, but he was much more in touch with reality than the PhDs of those days. And sadly, the PhDs of today 
are not that distant from the founder of the Israeli Central Bureau of Statistics. Uh, the same thing was the fate of uh, Theodor Herzl's opposition by the top uh, Jewish historian, top Jewish demographer uh, of uh, the late 19th century, who tried to convince Herzl to focus on Jewish autonomy in Europe or uh, somewhere in Russia. And he uh, claimed uh, uh, Shimon Dubnov, who was that top demographer and historian, that uh, by the year uh, 19, 87, there could not be more under the best case scenario, more than 500,000 Jews in the land of, uh, of Israel. And from here, I will move quickly to the numbers of uh, today. The first Palestinian census was issued in 19. 97, and uh, that census claimed in Gaza and Judea Samaria uh, 2.7, 2.8 million people. The fact that a few months earlier, December 1996, the Israeli Central Bureau of Statistics came with a much lower uh, number, 2.1, not the 2.8, did not stand on the way of the Israeli establishment, in my mind, in order to avoid rocking the boat, to embrace the Palestinian number without auditing, without due diligence. I'm sure among you, uh, unless you, uh, you uh, allow it to be uh, audited by a credible auditor, no one takes seriously uh, your balance sheet or income statement. The fact is that since 1997 until today, Israel has never officially, officially conducted due diligence of the Palestinian number, the team which I represent, uh, is the first and so far the sole group which audits those Palestinian uh, numbers. Uh, th there are uh, people who rely on the Israeli Ministry of Defense uh, Civil Administration. That's the agency of the Ministry of Defense that coordinates ties between Israel and the Palestinian Authority. Well, uh, based on my own personal uh, contact, a part of this study going back to 2004, the Israeli civil administration echoes, reverberates the Palestinian number. The Israeli civil administration does not, does not conduct due diligence of those numbers. When we started to conduct due diligence of those uh, numbers, uh, we found out, we found out, for instance, that according to them, not my own guess or interpretation, but the head of the Palestinian Central Bureau of Statistics stated following the first Palestinian census, 1997, that they included also 325,000 Arabs who were at that time for over a year abroad. There is an international standard of uh, conducting census. Um, uh, citizens, residents of a country that stay for over a year, a year and a day outside, whether it's for studying, working, uh, touring, consulting, doesn't matter why. You stay away for a year and a day. On that day, you're deducted from the census. It doesn't uh, impact your rights as far as your homeland is concerned, but a year and a day, you may be added to the census of another country. To avoid a double count, the international rule is very clear. You deduct them until they come back for at least 90 uh, days. I studied in the US for my undergraduate and graduate, uh, and I was uh, deducted until I came back to, uh, to Jerusalem. That number, 325,000, uh, does not remain as uh, is because every day uh, they are birthed. 
among those people who are abroad, and therefore that number rises continuously, as I mentioned here in 2004, before the so far, the last Palestinian election conducted by the Palestinian Authority, they uh, published uh, not reports by the Palestinian Election Commission suggesting that the number rose to 400,000 overseas residents. Today, we're talking about at least half a million overseas residents who are included in the census as if they reside, uh, reside here. And uh, if we um, uh, move, uh, move on, we find out, by the way, this is a report by the Israeli intelligence on, on that uh, phenomena of 325,000 who are abroad for over a year. And uh, we also saw that on their own website, to their credit, they did not cheat. They simply counted differently and they still count differently. And unless you conduct due diligence, you don't find out about that very weird way of uh, counting. Uh, we are also talking, and this, by the way, uh, a document for the Palestinian Central Bureau of Statistics, which attests to that uh, practice, which uh, is absent in every single report issued by the Israeli civil administration uh, back in, uh, in uh, 2007, another census was conducted. And once again, it was conducted as the Central Bureau of Statistics of the Palestinians suggested, it was conducted on the basis of de facto, namely only uh, people who are uh, in the area are counted, but taking into consideration minor local circumstances, which again goes back to the Palestinians' own documents, which means if you're a student, if you consider the area to be your home, the bottom line, half a million plus are counted as if they are here. We get reassurance of that from another source, Palestinian uh, Undersecretary of Interior Hassan Ilwi, October 2014, said, well, we registered since 1995 about 100,000 children born abroad. Well, that by itself means 300,000, the, the children who were born plus their parents. Then you have those who do not bear children or did not bear children. Again, the bottom line, we're talking about at least, at least half a million uh, people. The other uh, elements which inflate the, the number are, uh, uh, the, for instance, the 375, the 375,000 uh, Arabs who uh, are uh, in Jerusalem. 375 million Arabs who are in Jerusalem are counted by Israel as part of Israeli Arabs. But the Palestinian Authority says, hell no, they are Palestinians. And therefore they count them as part of the Arabs in Judea Samaria, namely 375,000 Arabs are doubly counted by Israel as Israeli Arabs, by the Palestinians as Palestinian Arabs. And this number, just like the half a million who are abroad for over a year, grows by the day due, uh, due to uh, uh, birth uh, among, uh, among those uh, Arabs. And indeed, we know, according to annual count of Israeli Arabs, the number grows systematically. Uh, we also talk about the issue of, uh, of uh, birth. Uh, issue of birth, we noticed a very substantial gap between the numbers here with green published by the Central Bureau of Statistics and the numbers published 
both by the by the Palestinian uh, Education Ministry and the Palestinian Health uh, Ministry, as well as by the Palestinian Election uh, Commission. And then we found out that this is no uh, big mystery because the World Bank published a report in September of 2006 and page eight of that uh, report, uh, there are some 70 pages of that report, indicates that the Palestinian Central Bureau of Statistics reported to them about 24% increase in the number of registered six-year-old to first grade. The phenomena of uh, dropout is non-existent in first and second grade, beginning third, fourth grade, outrageous dropout. But for first grade especially, but also second grade, it's 100% registration, which means if you want to find out about the number of birth, you find out how many register to first grade, you go back six years and you find how many were born six year uh, back. Uh, the Palestinian Central Bureau of Statistics reported or claimed to the World Bank that there was a 24% increase in the number of birth. They found out the World Bank, there was an 8% decline, namely around 32% gap uh, in the number of reported birth uh, by the Palestinian Central Bureau of Statistics, Statistics compared to the real number, which is more or less what we found out when we uh, studied the gap between the Palestinian Central Bureau of Statistics and the Palestinian uh, Ministry of Health and Education Ministry. This gap, by the way, disappeared after a debate which we held in 2006 uh, at the Haifa Technion, the Neeman Institute. It was a debate between uh, the team which I represent and the Palestinian Central Bureau of Statistics. And they admitted that at least when it comes to their migration number, which we'll see in a minute, they admit that they were uh, wrong and they accept our numbers. But when it came to the gap between the, uh, when, it came, when it came to the gap in the number of births, they claim, well, the Palestinian health ministry does not count overseas birth, which we uh, do. And since that debate, the gap disappeared uh, completely. Uh, the very uh, uh, frustrating or disappointing reality uh, was that when it came to the uh, net uh, migration or net immigration or net emigration uh, after that debate, when they accepted our number of, uh, of uh, migration, uh, they corrected their own statistics a week later. And guess what? The Israeli civil administration corrected their numbers as well, which was a reaffirmation of our claim that sadly, the Israeli establishment does not conduct due diligence, they simply echo reverberate. Here we see the numbers which the Palestinian Central Bureau of Statistics in red claimed. And they claimed when we first started auditing it, we realized something was fishy there because they claimed that in uh, uh, as far as Gaza, Judea and Samaria, there was net immigration of 50,000 and even over 50,000 uh, annually, as you can see in this uh, graph. Logically speaking, we did not think that that was accurate because uh, there has to be some attraction uh, in any country to attract uh, immigrants. Uh, we assumed we assumed that Judea, Samaria, especially Gaza, lack that attraction. And if at all, the reality there entices emigration rather than immigration. 
and we looked for validation uh, to the actual numbers. We found out that the Israeli Authority of Population and Migration conducts daily documentation of exits and entries in each one of the land and air and naval international passages of uh, Israel. And they document it according to Jews, to Arabs in pre-67 Israel, Arabs in Jerusalem, Arabs in Judea Samaria, and Arabs in Gaza. And we, when we studied those numbers, we realized that there was no net immigration. In fact, year in and year out, as you can see here with the green, net emigration. There is one exception, as you can see here, in 2019, and, and that is the uh, impact the impact of uh, COVID or Corona, where access was anywhere from limited to non-existing, and the potential emigrants had to stay in Judea, Samaria, in Gaza. But a year later, right away, as you can see uh, here, it went back to normalcy, some 29,000 29, net emigration from Judea and Samaria uh, alone. And I'm focusing right now on Judea and Samaria. I'm not aware of any public debate in Israel about applying the Israeli law to Gaza. The public debate is about applying the Israeli law to the Jordan Valley, to Area C, or any part of Judea and uh, Samaria. And uh, here we have uh, some uh, 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 documentation of the Palestinian, the Palestinian number where they projected certain uh, uh, level of net immigration, again, exceeding 50,000 a year, and that disappeared after that debate, which we held uh, in the Technion. Here uh, you have additional numbers issued by the Palestinians, and uh, you have the, the real numbers uh, uh, published by the Israeli Authority of Population and uh, Migration. And uh, this is the latest one for uh, uh, 2021, uh, where we're talking about uh, 29,000 29, net emigration from uh, Judea and uh, Samaria. Uh, there is another uh, discrepancy which we uh, found out during our due uh, diligence, and this is the reality of Arabs from Judea and Samaria and from Gaza marrying, marrying Israeli uh, Arabs. Uh, we found out that there has been in excess uh, of, there have been in excess of 150,000 Arabs marrying Israeli Arabs until November uh, 2003, they automatically received either uh, IDs of citizenship or ID of permanent uh, residentship. Uh, this practice uh, all but stopped, but for very few uh, exceptions uh, after November 2003. But those 150,000 plus have become part of the Israeli census. They have not uh, torn their Palestinian documentation. And just like Arabs in uh, Jerusalem, they are doubly counted by Israel and by the uh, Palestinians. And uh, uh, when it comes, by the way, to uh, uh, to net migration, I failed to mention that the overall number of uh, net emigration since 1997, the first Palestinian census, has been 370,000 uh, Arabs. As far as the Palestinian Authority, while they admit 
that there has never been 50,000 net immigration, but they claim that their numbers factor in zero net migration. When we ask them, what do you mean zero? There's no country in the world where the number of exits equals exactly the number of uh, entries. Their response was when they will control the international passages, that's when they will report uh, the actual number. But again, the gap uh, between zero and the actual number has been 370,000. Uh, and that uh, takes us back to one of the opening uh, slides uh, where uh, we, we showed the, the elements uh, inflating inflating the uh, the numbers and uh oh, just i'll make it slightly larger and they consist of 500,000 residents who are abroad and the number grows by the day 350 in fact today it's 375,000 Arabs of Jerusalem who are doubly counted, 380,000 net emigration. All those numbers grow by the day, uh, 100,000 uh, plus, in fact, it's 150,000 uh, who married Israeli Arabs. And again, the number grows by the day and 200,000 gap between the birth numbers reported and the actual uh, birth uh, data. And if we uh, continue, we find out that when you factor in that documented number, not assessments and not guesses and not projections, you find out that in the combined area of pre-67 Israel, Judea and Samaria, uh, you're talking about seven and a half million Jews next to two million Israeli Arabs in the pre-67 Israel, one and a half million Arabs in uh, Judea and Samaria, which means 68% uh, majority. 68% uh, uh, majority and uh, uh, that also uh, should be assessed against the backdrop, against the backdrop of the demographic trend in Judea and Samaria. And uh, that trend shows us that, whoops, that from 1950, when Jordan annexed the area, April 1950, following the War of Independence, until 1967, there was no growth of population in Judea Samaria. The reason was obvious. The Jordanians never trusted the Palestinians. They wanted to empty the area as fast as possible. And therefore they did not develop uh, uh, infrastructure is not health, not medical, not education, not employment, and not uh, roads. 67, Israel regained control of Judea and Samaria. And we see from 67 until 1993, four is full Israeli control of Judea and Samaria. We find out that this is the fastest growing uh, period of the population of Arabs in Judea, Samaria, due to the development of infrastructures. Anybody who talks about apartheid state in Israel has absolutely no, uh, uh, no idea about the reality. The fastest growing pace of Arabs, Arab population in the area took place under Israeli control. And the, re the reason was the impact of those infrastructures on declining infant mortality, almost down to the Jewish level, surging life expectancy, almost up to the Arab, uh, to the Jewish level, by the way, today life expectancy of Arabs in Judea, Samaria is more or less the same as the life expectancy of Americans in the USA. And due to the development of infrastructures, emigration, which was 
full speed ahead until 67, uh, due to, again, lack of employment opportunities, lack of schools of higher education, and the miserable reality, uh, a net emigration switched from fifth gear full speed ahead to second uh, gear under Israeli control. That type of curve misled the so-called uh, establishment of demographers and statisticians to assume that that curve will continue. And maybe not in a such uh, uh, a steep level, maybe in a more moderate level, but they ignore a fundamental fact of demographic reality, which is, uh, uh, pre-fall pre, uh, rise, namely, uh, and every time, any time you have Western society integrated with uh, third world society, due to the development of infrastructures, the third world society surges, as we can see here. However, after roughly a generation, modernity starts ticking, which means, as I mentioned here, massive uh, urbanization, heavy enrollment in school, which means women do not get or girls do not get married at the age of 15, starting the fertility process age of 16 until 55. But everything uh, start when it comes to fertility process after the age of 18 and increasingly closer and closer to the age of 22, 23, due to the rising number of uh, women in Judea Samaria, in fact, throughout the Arab world, seeking uh, uh, undergraduate studies and graduate uh, studies, delayed uh, wedding, shorter fertility uh, process, and also uh, women in the job market and the pill, family uh, planning. Uh, there are studies conducted by the UN. Morocco leads the Muslim world as far as the use of contraceptives. Number two, the Palestinian Authority. And as a result, we see the pre-fall surge. After the surge comes the, the fall as we see it uh, uh, today. And uh, that means not only, it's not limited only to Judea, Samaria or the Green Line, it's all over the Muslim world from Iran through Mauritania in West, uh, Northwest Africa, the entire Muslim world, but for the Sub-Sahara countries is experiencing very rapid Westernization. Uh, in fact, Today, the fertility rate, number of birth per woman in Israel among Jews is higher than any Arab country other than Yemen, Iraq, and Egypt, which are also rapidly hmm. declining. Very, very rapidly because uh, time is in fact already up, but I'll do it very, very uh, briefly. Moving to, uh, back to the pre-67 Israel the fertility rate, uh, number of births per woman. We see here that in during the 60s, 1960s, there was a six birth gap in favor of Arab women, about three births per Jewish woman, about nine births per Arab uh, women. In 2015, that gap disappeared completely. 2015, 3.13 uh, fertility rate for Arab and Jewish women. From 2015 until today, the last uh, year that we have the actual number, very shortly we'll have uh, 2021. But since 2015, every year we have higher Jewish fertility than Arab fertility. In fact, 2020, for the first time, it wasn't only higher than Arab fertility, but for the first time, even higher than the Muslim Arab uh, fertility. And we can see it in the 
actual uh, number of birth. This is uh, uh, a trend since 1995, we decided to take as wide trend as possible rather than being uh, blamed supposedly for choosing convenient years. This is from 1995 until this very day or until the end of 2021. The blue are the Jewish birth, the red are the Arab birth, in pre-67 uh, Israel, and we see the Jewish birth rising from 80,000 to 141,000, a 76 percent rise. I'm not familiar with any country in the world with such a surge in the number of uh, birth. 76 percent compared to 20 percent rise during the same years by Arab birth in the area. Uh, the, the reason for the surge of uh, Jewish uh, birth in my mind, and according to different studies which we uh, read, has to do with very high level of optimism, patriotism, attachment to roots, communal responsibilities, and regard for children among Jews in, uh, in Israel. By the way, contrary to what we see in Europe, I'm not familiar with Australia, but in Europe, why uh, produce children? Uh, there is pessimism, which has overtaken most uh, uh, Europeans. And if you're not an optimistic, and certainly patriotism is almost passé, among more and more uh, Europeans, attachment to roots, why care about the roots? And the bottom line uh, has to do with very, very, very low fertility rate. You need 2.1 birth per woman to maintain the same number today in a generation. In Europe, it's closer to two uh, it, it's closer to one birth per woman than it is to two birth per woman, which means every generation less and less uh, Europeans. Uh, as far as the uh, as the less the the lower number of Arab birth, as I mentioned before, uh, urbanization the, the same thing which applies to Judea Samaria applies to Arabs uh, inside pre sixty seven Israel uh, in sixty seven uh, seventy five percent of Judea and Samaria Arabs were rural Arabs. When you are a rural society, you need a helping hand, uh, helping the father in the uh, agricultural uh, duties. Uh, it's also relatively easier to grow more and more children when you live in a village. But today we're talking about 75% urban society in Judea and Samaria, which means you don't need the helping hand as you do in the village. And certainly it's not that easy to raise many children when you reside on the fifth floor of the high rise in your village or in your town or the 12th floor or even in the third, uh, in the third floor. And again, the same applies to Israel as, uh, as well. Uh, we are about to, uh, to finish uh, here. Uh, again, uh, we have had more uh, projections uh, re issued recently by the Israeli Central Bureau of Statistics. And as pre previous uh, projections, they have been wrong from the inset. And by the way, as far as I'm concerned, uh, demographic projections are not to be taken too seriously because first and foremost, there is no such thing as linear progression of demography. Demography depends on multitude, domestic and external uh, elements, uh, which means there is no such thing as linear. And if though there is no such thing as linear, any projection you make is speculative. It depends on social uh, reality, depends 
on military reality. It depends just like in the case uh, of Israel, the reality in Ukraine and in Russia, it depended years ago that this, uh, um, the, uh, the, the dislocation, so to speak, or dismember, dismemberment of the Soviet Union, which produced a million and a quarter, you cannot factor such uh, elements into a projection. Hence, the continuous, the systematic uh, erroneous uh, approach. Uh, last and not least, and here I conclude my presentation, uh, before we uh, came out uh, publicly uh, back in 2005, I sent the report to uh, one of the top uh, demographers when it comes to researching the Muslim world's demography in uh, Washington, uh, Dr. Nick Eberstad, very experienced demography. It took him about two months to examine our study. And he came, this is a summary of his conclusion, which he also read in one of the annual uh, um, seminars of the uh, IDC in Herzliya here in Israel. I think the bottom line uh, here, when he referred to us, a group of non-demographers that caught the demographic profession asleep at the switch. I can also share with you that he uh, admitted that he was also asleep at the switch because he joined the conventional wisdom, assuming Jews are part of the Western world, hence very low fertility rate, Arabs are part of the third world, and therefore high fertility rate. And he admitted when he spoke with us, he said he was also asleep at the switch. Uh, one last comment. This is not a study to boost the right of center or to undermine left of center. As far as I can, as far as I see the study, it's a study designated to find out the, uh, the reality of demography west of the Jordan River. And equally important, this is a study uh, designed in my mind to bolster Jewish optimism and uh, defeat uh, Jewish uh, pessimism. And as I say uh, to my friends uh, left of center, most of my friends are left of center. Next time you go to Ramallah to meet with your friends of the Palestinian Authority, don't stand there with shaky demographic uh, feet. Uh, you have very, very strong demographic feet, and there's no need to be scared of uh, uh, any uh, eventual application of Israeli law to parts of Judea Samaria or the whole of Judea Samaria. And I would like to conclude here and turn it now, not necessarily, not only to questions, but uh, also to uh, 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 to your own comments, uh, disagreements, uh, criticizing anything which I said during my presentation. Thank you very much, Yoram. Um, now we might just. Do you want to leave that? Do you want to leave that slide up, or are you, or, you've, or have you finished? That's it. Okay. Um, Okay, so uh, if you're listening on JAIR, this is the Australian Jewish Association Zoom event, which we have every Wednesday night. Our guest tonight is retired Ambassador Yoram Ettinger, and he's been telling us about the myth of the demographic, demographic threat to Israel from the Palestinian Arab population. Just before we go to questions, and uh, we'll only have time for a few, I think, tonight, uh, I'm just going to hand back to David to uh, give us a few uh, notices and tell us what's happening. Okay, thank you very much, Alan. And uh, as we do uh, every week, um, anyone here at the end of the event, please do something active in support of AJA. Uh, if you're not yet a member, go to the website, jewishassociation.org.au, where you can join. Uh, make sure you're following our Facebook page for daily updates, news and views. And I will put into the chat the account number 
of our new entity, which is uh, AJA Tzedaka, uh, primarily designed for uh, fighting anti-Semitism and supporting uh, Jewish culture, and you can consider making a donation. Now, uh, we don't have uh, an announcement specifically for next week. Uh, at this stage, some things are still being sorted out. So please uh, watch the Facebook page and we will announce details there and also in the email bulletins. Uh, I just want to update you on one thing that happened, therefore, uh, a few days ago. We held a Young Jewish Professionals event uh, in Melbourne. Uh, it was sold out. And just before we began that event where the uh, person in charge was Rabbi Moshe Khan, um, he told us some interesting information, which was that uh, not for the first time, uh, he'd been uh, approached by a couple of people from within our community that the event should be cancelled. Uh, he didn't accede to that pressure and we continued and had a very successful event in Melbourne. So that's a sort of a contrary uh, update and somebody's put in the text, Gideon Rosner is cool. <laughs> uh, and uh, yes, he is. And we'll continue to do things with him. Okay, thanks, David. We've got just a few minutes for some uh, questions. So I've got Anne, Ron, and Dennis as the first three up there. So we'll go straight into it. Uh, Anne, please unmute yourself and ask your question. I'll be quick. Um, I, I, um, Yoram, thank you for the presentation. Firstly, is this Palestinian demographic inaccuracy just about money? Well. First and foremost, it's designed to scare the Jews. Uh, because if one accepts the notion that uh, Arabs are destined uh, to be superior to Jews uh, demographically, uh, the question is not uh, whether, the question is when will there be an Arab majority? And if that threat is credible to a joint area between Judea, Samaria, and pre-67 Israel, then within 10, 20, or 50 years, it will apply also to pre-67 Israel. So why doom our children, our grandchildren, great-grandchildren, to a reality of being a Jewish minority in an Arab-controlled state? They are very smart in advancing uh, this myth of Arab demographic time bomb. They have some allies, many allies in Israel and outside of Israel as well, but it's primarily, primarily to scare the Jewish community inside Israel and outside Israel. Obviously, in addition, it has to do with finances because if uh, the more they boost, the more they inflate their numbers, the higher the aid, financial aid, which they get from international organizations, gullible international organizations, gullible Western governments, and I admit some gullible elements in Israel as well, who do not want to rock the, the boat. And I say it based on my private contacts with people who publicly will not admit that we are pretty, uh, very, very uh, uh, bolstered as far as demography. They will not admit it in public and they confide and they confide that they assume that racking the boat has a very, very significant, serious cost. So why rock the boat and uh, accuse the Palestinian Central Bureau of Statistics of uh, artificially inflating the number? I received a number of calls from the Israeli Water Authority when they informed me that uh, in their dealings with the Palestinian Authority, they are continuously asked to increase the water allocation. And based on our numbers, they told the Palestinians, you already get too much, much more than you deserve. So don't overdo it because we know exactly that you have less people than you uh, claim. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, Ron, your turn. Please unmute yourself and ask your question. Uh, thank you, Yoram, um, for your interesting presentation. I would like to ask you if there's a direct um, positive correlation between um, the growth of uh, communities and towns in Judea Samaria. And if this is the case with the present government, do you, um, you know, with, with regard to um, immigration of um, Arabs in the Judea and Samaria? And if this is the case with the present government, do you see the immigration accelerating? Well, I, I would say that, the, again, based on contacts with the uh, Arabs in Judea and Samaria, based on studies uh, made about the issue of uh, migration, uh, around 50% of Arabs in Judea and Samaria uh, would emigrate if conditions were uh, right, if uh, inducements were uh, right. I certainly uh, oppose uh, any attempt to uh, uh, violently or through physical force to encourage, to entice uh, emigration. Uh, I know, for instance, that uh, uh, there are thousands, literally thousands of Arabs who would like to emigrate, but not through the land bridges with Jordan. They know once they go through the Allenby Bridge or another uh, uh, land uh, uh, passage with Jordan, they go through Palestinian intelligence, they go through Jordanian intelligence. Sometimes they have to leave behind them a deposit which will be collected if and when they come back. They would rather emigrate through Ben Gurion Airport, which has been a security uh, problem. And because of that, they have not uh, emigrated. Alan, are you still with us? Uh, I think he called out uh, Dennis next. So, uh, Dennis, if you can unmute and ask your question, please. Yes, with regard, thank you very much for your uh, expose on population issues in Israel. Uh, the question is given the West Bank or the uh, Judea and Samaria situation, what is, is there any projection for the, what the real population of Jews and the real population of non-Jews in Judea and Samaria over the next five or 10 years? What will the balance be? Well, as, as I mentioned before, and I adhere to that, uh, I uh, oppose issuing any projections. I uh, have not based, or we as a team have not based our study on any projection or any projection because projection by definition are speculative and they depend on a litany of uncontrollable uh, elements and therefore it will be, in my opinion, irresponsible to issue a projection. One can say at the same time or one can suggest at the same time that should the Israeli government uh, revert back to the tradition which was upheld by all Israeli prime ministers from Ben-Gurion in 48 through Shamir until the end of 1992, namely considering Aliyah as one of the top priorities. If uh, Israel will revert back to proactive aliyah, not only proactive absorption, but proactive aliyah, which was the key for one and a quarter million Jews coming out of Soviet Union, we can expect conservatively, conservatively 500,000 olim during the next three to five years. Uh, when you look at the war between Russia and Ukraine, again, totally unexpected, that already has uh, bolstered the Aliyah to, uh, to Israel. We have to wait until the end of the year to find out what we're talking about. Very, very high number of uh, Olim without, without 
proactive Israeli uh, policy. Uh, the, the importance of uh, waves of Aliyah in my mind is that this is the foundation for overall growth. It's the foundation of educational growth, technological growth, scientific growth, obviously economic growth, military growth. Look at uh, Europe, which must, which must import millions and millions of emigrants from Asia and Africa if they want to sustain their standard of living because they don't produce children. Israel is a unique country. By the way, we are a unique country when it comes to fertility or uh, birth uh, numbers because we are the only Western country, probably the only country in the world, with a positive correlation between the level of income, level of education, and level of fertility. Throughout the Western world, I assume in Australia as well, I may be wrong about Australia, but throughout the world, there is negative correlation, namely the higher level of income, the higher level of education, the lower the number of children born in such families, not in Israel. And the same applies also to the role played by secular families or secular women in, uh, in Israel, uh, talking to secular folks in the Tel Aviv area, they don't talk anymore, when I say they, majority of them, they don't talk anymore about one or two, they talk about three or uh, four. I don't believe that there is any similar uh, uh, reality in any uh, uh, democracy in the world. Uh, it is uh, a major feature of Israel, which I believe also allows us to be optimistic for the next generation, because since 1995, we have produced uh, the foundation for continued uh, uh, positive demography in Israel. Okay, well, um, we, we've, we've come up to time, so apologies to Jeff and Anthony. You're, um, uh, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. You, you said that you uh, you provide optimism to people, and I, I'm certainly feeling much more optimistic now and, uh, and now after your presentation. So um, fascinating subject. Thank you for joining us and, um, and, and all the best for the future. Now, I will just mention one, that... One, one comment, if I may. First of all, it's reality-based optimism. It's not... Uh, optimism devoid of reality. Secondly, anyone who wishes uh, to get uh, more information, uh, I have many articles on this subject, which I write on a weekly uh, basis, US-Israel relation, Middle East, as well as demographics. My email address is uh, Yoram Tex, Y-O-R-A-M-T-E-X, uh, at gmail.com. Okay, and uh, of course, your Etting Ettinger report comes out. I, I think it's every couple of days, isn't it? Uh, because uh, once a week. Once okay, a week. once a week. Uh, I subscribe to it, and uh, it's always fascinating reading. So people are welcome to subscribe and have a look at what you do. Um, just before we go, that's uh, that's all we have for tonight. Uh, a reminder that the Lachaim program with Morris Klein is on right now on three triple Z or FM ninety two point three. That's all we have for tonight. Stay tuned for uh, some um, uh, information about next week. But don't forget, you can keep up to date with what the AJA is talking about on our Facebook page. Please like it and share it widely. But for now, we wish you all a very good evening and look forward to seeing you again next week as usual. Thank you, Yoram, and uh, Thank you. to everybody else. Good night to you all.